Hello everyone, welcome back to Salar Khan YouTube channel. We are discussing the breakdown process of a solid insulation. In the previous video, we talked about the intrinsic and electromechanical processes. And from there, we can conclude that they were short time processes and involved very high electric fields. We saw they were in the order of megavolts per centimeter. The next in order is the thermal instability leading towards a thermal breakdown of the insulation. So we talk about thermal instability in this video. Now generally, generally why do a material heats up? Why does a material heat up? Because it does not dissipate the heat properly. Right? Yes. Similar is the case with the insulator as well because I've told you in the beginning that all good electrical conductors are also good heat conductors and similarly all good electrical insulators are good heat insulators this was from the scientist Wiedemann and Franz Wiedemann Franz law this is called or whatever it is but the thing is that a good electrical insulator is a a good heat insulator as well which means it will not dissipate the heat now where will this heat come from the heat comes from the current from the i square r losses we've got what we've got the i square r losses in the conductor the current is flowing through the conductor so there would be i square r losses due to the flow of current now why are these so you know them basically uh, you don't have to ask me that the current flows so there is friction this is because the friction between the, uh, the between the electrons and the atoms so i square r losses now the conductor would dissipate this heat but it is wrapped around by an insulator so the heat gets trapped and it cannot be exchanged effectively with the environment so that is why we talk about thermal instability or the heating phenomena in the insulation right yes let's talk about uh, this thing i square r losses the power lost is i square r where R is the resistance and is given by rho L upon A. I squared rho L upon A. Or I could write I square R or V squared by R. Can I not write it like this that power loss is equal to V squared by R. So I could write it at V squared times a divided by rho times l can i not write it this way i can or i can write it in terms of the conductivity sigma is the resistivity i can write it in terms of its conductivity uh, which is uh, what which is 1 over uh, sigma so sigma v squared a upon length now isn't it like this it is now if i multiply and divide this by a unit length multiply and divide this by a length 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 would be l squared this would be the volume so the power loss gives me what conductivity sigma v squared times area into length is the volume of the material divided by the length squared volt per meter is the unit of electric field volt per meter is electric field e volt square per meter square length square is e squared so the power loss is sigma e squared into volume or we generally talk of unit volume so per unit volume the power loss i would write power loss per unit volume is equal to sigma e squared this is let's say our concerned equation the power loss per unit volume which is the heat produced this is my source so I would let's say let's say I write it as a WL 
or the total heat produced this is my equation number one which is giving me the heat produced or the source this is the source yes yes now of course this is an insulation so it will not effectively dissipate the heat into the environment but you know it will dissipate some of it into the environment so the total heat produced now will have will be divided into two components and what are those two components so the total two components are that some of the heat would be absorbed plus some of the heat would be dissipated now the heat absorbed according to the first principle of thermodynamics we are talking of a constant volume this would be cv dt upon dt the derivative cv is the specific heat constant at a constant volume and this dt by dt is what this is the temperature gradient similarly the heat dissipated is also proportional to the gradient of the temperature difference the temperature difference means what that this is one is the inside temperature one is the outside temperature the more the difference between them the effective is the heat dissipation directly proportional to the gradient of the t gradient of t gradient of t i will write over here gradient of t because gradient basically gives you a slope right yes so i could just write it as k times dt upon dx x is any length so the change of temperature where k is the thermal conductivity which is low for insulator this is your thermal conductivity it's k time dt dx or I tell you that when the heat is dissipated so this is dissipated in the form of a divergence it diverges out right and the flux is radially outward so which means the application of divergence theorem we take the divergence of this so k times the divergence of the heat dissipation dt upon dx or I can write it that this is another derivative. Let's suppose I write it this way. The divergence itself is a derivative. So I would write it this way. Or I could write that the heat dissipated would be equal to what? K times the double derivative of this thing. Is that fine? It is. So the total heat, you could write it over here. And this should be equal to what? This should be equal to the heat produced, right? So the heat produced is equal to these two components, which means that I would write that sigma E squared is equal to CV DT upon DT plus K times D squared T upon DX squared. Is that fine till here it is. So this is the source that is the heat being produced and it is now being divided into two components the one being absorbed the other being dissipated let me write this as the total heat h let me write this as h1 and let me write this as h2 is that fine till here it is now for the solution of this this is a non-linear homogeneous equation differential equation I cannot go for the solution directly you have to use numerical methods I don't like solutions differential equations let it go let it go what do you have what do you have is if the absorption is greater than the dissipation it will lead towards thermal instability if it's less than the dissipation then you don't have a problem and when these two are equal you've got an equilibrium state simple as that just comment this one over here if the heat absorbed is greater than the heat dissipated so what do you have you are moving towards a thermal instability whereas if the heat absorbed heat dissipated is greater than the heat absorbed so this thing is fine 
and if these two are equal then you are under the state of an equilibrium still it is fine all right it is but the thing is that all good electrical insulators are also good heat insulators so most of the heat is trapped generally and the case is that the absorbed heat would be greater than the thermal uh, than the dissipated heat and this goes to thermal instability why because the absorbed heat further raises the temperature and which means i square r losses further increases one other thing one other problem that we have is that the insulators have got a negative thermal coefficient insulators have got a negative thermal coefficient which means what happens is negative thermal coefficient of resistance which means what that the resistance decreases with the increase in temperature so which means what that if the temperature has increased for the insulation its resistance decreases and the leakage current starts to flow it finds a path to flow leakage current finds a path to flow so i am telling you what that the most of the heat is being stored thermal capacitance have you heard a word maybe in control systems where we are modeling thermal systems one day we'll see control systems on my channel inshallah very soon but the thing is that the resistance of the insulator has decreased with the increase in temperature so if the resistance has decreased what happens is that the leakage current through it would increase if the current has increased and resistance has decreased this means the i square r losses would further increase i square r losses are further increasing which means the temperature is further increasing and if the temperature is further increasing again the resistance is decreasing and this is what this is a positive feedback phenomena and what is happening in this case this is moving towards a thermal instability and finally a thermal breakdown and what is that i told you so most of the solid insulation we talk about polymers class in this case is so they will go back into the molten state they will melt your insulation will melt one other thing what do i have over here let's say uh, how how do you know how do you come to know that thermal instability has occurred so fumes begin to form from the insulation you would have noticed and the noticeable thing is that smell comes from there smell comes from the insulation and you say just turn off the machine so once the thermal instability has been reached you have you know sensed that smell this process is now irreversible and the machine is not going for a longer run sometimes you do what you uh, you turn on the machine it gets heated up you turn it off gets temperature you know it goes into the normal limit again you turn it on on and off this is called cyclic thermal loading not a good practice although but you know once the thermal instability is reached the point is that this is an irreversible process and the machine is not going for a longer run it may damage any time if i talk about a numerical example over here the cv is given for a material which is 1.3 into 10 to the power 3 joule per kilogram per degree kelvin the rate of rise of temperature rate of rise of temperature is given is 0.6 degree centigrade per second conductivity is given 10 to the power negative 10 siemens per centimeter the electric field is required to bring about thermal instability so thermal instability we are talking about so we are not given anything about the term number 2 in this case so let's say we say about thermal instability heat dissipation is being ignored all the heat being produced is being absorbed so sigma e squared 
इज इक्वल टू सी वी डी टी अपॉन डी टी सो ई वुड बी वॉट सी वी इज गिवन वन पॉइंट थ्री इंटर टेन टू द पावर थ्री राइट यस वन पॉइंट थ्री इंटर टेन टू द पावर थ्री The rate of rise of temperature is 0.6 degree centigrade. You need this what? You need this in degree Kelvin. So this would be 273.6 degree Kelvin. And divide it by by that thing by 10 to the power negative 8. 10 to the power negative 8. Why? Because for per meter for per meter, and I would. Take an under root of this. What does this come out to be? So the electric field required to bring about thermal instability is 5.96 into 10 to the power 6 volt per meter. We need it in megavolts per centimeter. So this is uh, megavolt per meter, megavolt per meter, right? And further dividing it by 100. So the electric field gives. You 0.0596 megavolt per centimeter have a look, which is far less than the intrinsic strength, which is way less than the one which I told you was the minimum intrinsic strength. So this is very less than the intrinsic strength, which means that thermal instability will always occur first. Thermal instability will always occur first. This is the point. Thermal breakdown and melting of the insulator is something else. But thermal instability, while talking of solid insulation, thermal instability will always come first. This is the point you need to know. That is it. That is it. Most faults on the insulation are due to thermal instability and most of the insulation fails due to thermal instability, 90%. Let me just, you know, put down the figure. Let's say, just write it as more than 60% of the insulation fails due to thermal instability, right? Yes. Under AC condition, the power loss per unit volume is given by what formula? Just write it down for yourself as well. Under AC condition, the power loss per unit volume, which was WL I wrote over there, is equal to omega epsilon E squared tangent of delta watt per meter cube. Where tangent of delta, we'll talk about it. This is the loss tangent. Where delta is the loss angle. We will talk about it somewhere. I'm giving a question over here. The less the tangent of delta for an insulation, the better the insulation is. Just keep it in your mind. So say for a dielectric material, the relative permittivity is 3.2. Frequency is 50 hertz. And it's operating at a delta of 2 degrees. So for that, you can find out the power loss per unit volume. The power loss per unit volume would be what? So omega is 2 pi into 50 is the frequency. E would be 3.2 into epsilon naught 8.85 into 10 to the power negative 12. E squared is volt uh, for E squared. What do you have? E we've got. E we will take this E. We'll take this E in terms of volt per meter, right? Yes. So 5.96 into 10 to the power 6 whole squared and tangent of 2 degrees. Just do the calculation, do the calculation. This comes out to be 11 kilowatt per meter cube. Have a look, this is a huge amount of flux. This is that heat flux. The heat flux at the onset of thermal instability. From where the thermal instability has started, this is the heat flux where it will start. The heat flux at the onset of thermal instability. Do I have any other point left over here? I don't. I don't have any other point. The point that we saw over here was that the resistance decreases with the rise of temperature, the current increases I square R loss is further increases which means the temperature further increases and hence the resistance further decreases a positive feedback phenomena 
overhead transmission lines are bare conductors you don't have an insulation on them is because of the very high voltages so the thing is that effective heat exchange the environment acts as an infinite heat sink for the bare overhead transmission line conductors this is a question generally asked why don't we have insulation on the transmission line conductors is number one the reason is that the heat is exchanged to the environment directly the environment is an infinite heat sink and the second is due to theft you know if there was an insulation so someone would just come and wrap around the conductor and go right yes so I believe that I would finish this thing over here I don't have anything else to talk about by the way if I ask you a question why is solid insulation not used in circuit breakers do you know the answer to this why is it not used in transformers so in transformers it is not used because I told you it will not exchange the heat and it will burn the winding right yes then why is it not used in circuit breaker so the answer is that its dielectric strength is not recoverable for circuit breaker we need an insulation whose dielectric strength is reverse uh, recoverable because we have a number of trippings in a day how much time you operate your circuit breaker right yes so I believe that you've got the main idea of the thermal instability temperature increases resistance decreases for an insulation so but this takes time this takes time right as we saw in the breakdown voltage versus time this takes time this was intrinsic this was electromechanical here is somewhat thermal so have a look the breakdown voltage is less for this but it takes time generally years a few years this takes time but then it can occur the thermal breakdown can occur at a very less voltage but it takes time right yes that is it about this video i will see you in the next one with the next that is the fourth is erosion i believe till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye